I was obviously retaining fluid. And the only reason I knew that is I popped buttons off my pants. I have a very conscious memory of being awesome. I'm finally putting on weight because I was a scrawny little 18 year old. And uh, that was it. Changed pants and went to school. My buddies looked at me, stuffed me in the car, threw me into a merge and said, check this guy out, there's something wrong. <laughs> they did a urine test and a blood test and they're like, your kidneys have stopped working. My sight failed just for a long time with dialysis. And uh, so I had two issues to deal with. And while I was taking dialysis, I had to do eye surgery. So that was another scary thing. I did three surgeries then. And so I, I gave up a lot of things that I used to do. I've known since day one that I was going to be on dialysis. I was born with a quarter of one kidney, which uh, then I lost when I was about 19. I still did all the normal stuff though, you know, like I rolled my dirt bike, I've done crazy stuff on my four wheelers, but I just always had that at the back of my mind that I had to be careful because, you know, you never know. I was the one who discovered it, yes. I saw that I had plus three protein in my urine in my microbiology class. I knew that wasn't normal and so I went to my family doctor and my family doctor then referred me to a nephrologist. And so at the ripe old age of 22, I realized that, um, yeah, my one kidney wasn't going to last me. It wasn't until I had uh, graduated from university that I knew dialysis was my only choice and it very quickly became apparent that dialyzing in my house and giving me freedom for my schedule was really important. And that meant doing dialysis overnight while I was sleeping. And I've been on home nocturnal now for about uh, 14 or 15 years. The concept of sleeping with this machine and needles in my arm was kind of freaking me out a bit. Like at some point, the scales tipped in favor of, okay, we'll deal with that as long as it means I can do more stuff in the evenings. For me, the bigger part about having dialysis in the house is dealing with all the logistics. So inventory, control on your supplies, the delivery, the maintenance. The maintenance guys work nine to five, so do I. <laughs> So I always have to take some time off work to come and let them in the house. These are people I've known for 20, 25 years. So a lot of times they come first thing in the morning, I let them in, I go to work, they lock up when they're done. There's a lot of heavy boxes. So having a wife that does weightlifting training helps. I was very conscious of not unloading the entire responsibility of caring for me for the part I can't do onto Heather alone. I probably had about 15 or 20 people that I could call on at any time to help facilitate dialysis at home that didn't involve Heather and Heather was free to do her thing. People get sort of in this mindset that this is an all or nothing thing. Like it's dialysis first and everything else is secondary. And my view of it is Everything else is first, and dialysis just facilitates that. And that's how I viewed the positivity of home dialysis. I had no other choice but to choose hemo in center because I'm legally blind. And so I, I can't see to do the, um, the PD or even the home hemo. One of my biggest issues when I started dialysis was transportation. From my, the center that was taking the house is a normal drive time is about 12 to 14 minutes. When I take a wheel trans, it takes me an hour and a half to three hours to go and come. There are moments when I find myself feeling depressed. And I think it's, it's because of some days you go in there and you get a hard time with that. Just like I said, my kneeling was very difficult for me. Sometimes low blood pressure or sometimes the machine would be 20 times for treatment and all these things affect you one way or another. It becomes, sometimes it becomes like a burden and you have to do it because you want to stay alive. But sometimes it's, it's overwhelming. One of the things I did to take off the pressure from me is I start to interact 
I took a leading role in interacting with all the patients there. I didn't give up my sense of humor. I didn't give up the will to live. I didn't give up my, my idea of helping people because of the illness that I have. I didn't, I didn't give up uh, seeing my grandkids, talking to my sons. I chose peritoneal dialysis because at the time, the region that I live in did not have home hemo and I really wanted something that allowed me to do it at home. I didn't want to go into the hospital and spend several hours on a machine. My kids were young, so I wanted to have it be something that I could incorporate into my life. It also came with um, a few more dietary and fluid freedoms that hemodialysis didn't give me. And I did the exchanges at first, but you have a restriction with lifting. That was a little bit of a challenge for me because I would sometimes lift my daughters into their car seats. Well, after a couple of months, I ended up on the night cycler. It felt like it was less invasive of my day-to-day -day life. Fatigue was a huge thing. I'd go to bed and I would sleep and I would feel like I hadn't slept. And I'm a high energy person, I like to do stuff. So I made myself do it, but I didn't feel like doing it. I think at first I came with mentality of the doctors need to do this, the, the nurses need to do this for me. And when I realized, no, there are people out there that are doing it for themselves, I can do it too. I went with hemodialysis only because I was not eligible for peritoneal because I've had too many abdominal surgeries. And I've also gone with a catheter because um, my fistula clotted trying to save my kidney. And I'm not eligible for another fistula now. I'm trying to hang out with this as long as I can. <laughs> when I go in in the morning, I'll sit in the waiting room and I'll talk to the people in the waiting room. And there's actually uh, an older gentleman that tells me jokes every morning before I go in. And he tells me like the same joke every time, <laughs> which is hilarious. Sometimes after dialysis, my motor skills are really bad and I'm slurring my words. I'm kind of off balance and I don't feel good. Those days really suck. But other than that, like I usually go to work sometimes after dialysis. I get to see a doctor every Tuesday and Thursday, which is really nice. So if I have any issues at all, there's also, you know, dietitians and everything right there at your fingertips all the time. If you have any questions about anything, I don't have to call and make an appointment because I'm already there. Leaving the machine at the hospital is kind of like, okay, when I'm at the hospital, I deal with that. When I go home, I'm just a regular guy. That's it. I try to keep it to the back. I don't, like I said, I don't let it run my life. As long as it's back there and I am paying attention, then it's okay. As long as, as once it starts getting ahead of me, then I'm in trouble. It's all in what fits your lifestyle. <laughs>